Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show ready uh, to come at you here. From I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter from uh, the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, video producer for uh, some promotion, especially the International Wrestling Cartel tonight. Also with me from San Antonio, Texas, is I almost called you the Wrestle Fan. I don't know why I had a flashback there. Oh, <laughs> going back in time to four years ago. Back in time. Eamon Peyton, he's the uh, ringside commentator for the uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling. Is doing great, great things down there uh, in, in Texas. I yes, indeed. I yes, I, I I remember back in the days of Russell Fan, and now I have to have a real boy name because I, <laughs> that's not a professional name to have. Uh, when working for a professional wrestling company. So, I'm the wrestle yay, fan, t- bringing you all the vibes from ringside here for Inspire Pro. No, I think it'd work. I think you could play into that, you know. Um, anyways, uh, we'll see. this is the Indie Mayhem Show, uh, where we uh, celebrate the world of indie wrestling and try to have an interview here for you every week and have some topics to talk about, uh, about, about what we enjoy and what we're ingrained in. Uh, you can get involved with us, of course, at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can follow us at Mayhem Show on Twitter. Email GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or drop to the, the hotline 412-206-WMS0. Uh, find Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, on Google+, and the great uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. And please, uh, big props to our friend uh, Basic Sickness for the intro, outro music for this and, and the other Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, at BasicSickness.com. You can get some free music over there. And you can join us typically. We're doing 9 p.m. a little switch with the Wrestling Mayhem show tonight, but typically we're on 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central for Eamon uh, at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Eamon, we got a returning guest this week. and We do have a, retur- a returning of sorts because uh, mm-hmm. uh, we... It's, it's the same person, but but under a bit different uh, uh, terms. I like to say this is like the post cocoon state of what he was before to what he is now. He is, uh, of course, joining us before talking about aftershock, but now a little bit of an upgrade is now he's the promoter and owner of the International Wrestling Cartel. He is Justin Plummer. Thank you, Mister Sword, and thank you comparing for comparing me to a butterfly to start the show. There's actually no other animal I'd like to be compared to because I do feel like I am a butterfly sitting here in my garage uh, with the green screen or the blue screen that I don't use anymore. But uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I'm totally excited to finally be, finally be able to big league you now and to act like I'm way cooler than I actually am. You are kind of my boss as far as IWC goes now, so this will be a really interesting interview. Um, but it's not the first What's time. What's the over-under on how many times I fire you tonight? <laughs> That's, that's okay. You know how many times Chachi quits during a night working with you or the other guys. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, I ain't scared. I got options. My goal is to be the Michael Scott of indie wrestling. Like, okay. The, the, he can, I can lay down the hammer, but I'm everybody's friend at the same time. And I'm completely hilarious and attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Package. So I guess oh, you know, we've asked you the, the, the normal line of questions. So really I want to get to know, like, how has it been? You you, you took over the company at the beginning of the year. It, it is now you know, the last day in March. So you're 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 running into your fourth uh your fourth uh month as the owner. Uh two shows under your belt, Clearfield and, and, and the home base at Core Time Sports Center. And uh, of course this big, big show with Night of the Superstars happening in Meadville on April eleventh with some big names that we'll get into here in a little bit how does it feel so far uh so far so good um i'll tell you i can give uh, chuck roberts a a giant uh, round of applause for being able to do something like this on his own because sometimes sometimes i just have to call chuck up and just and just vent because there's no way to even as as the transition was happening, and this has been in, you know this was in the works for six to eight months before the actual sale of the company, um, but it, it's so <laughs> words can't even describe how difficult it can be. Mm-hmm. It's it, it could literally be a full time job, and it should be it, it, if it's done right. It should be a full time job. So to throw an actual full time job on top of that. Uh, to throw being a father of two, to throw being a husband and a and, uh, basketball coach and all the other stuff, it is, it's very, very difficult. 
And honestly, uh, I don't know how he did it on his own. My wife, Jen, helps me out a ton mm -hmm. with uh, a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff because everybody thinks, oh, you're a wrestling promoter. You get to book. You get to – you have creative control. It's so much fun. But that's literally maybe <laughs> – 10% or less of all the other crap that you have to do to make sure that three hours per month go smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, but it's as challenging as it is, uh, and I know it's early on yet, we're, we're only a few months in, but uh, it, it's, it's very enjoyable. I'm doing what I love. Uh, haven't lost money, which is always a plus, and um, I, I can see us building momentum already, which is really exciting. Uh, you know, Setting uh, the core time attendance was probably the highest it was in, in five or six years. Setting a clear field attendance record uh, on my first shot up there. And now uh, with Meadville coming and with the lineup we have, I'm, I'm really anxious to see pre-sales looking uh, really good. And if the pre-sales any indicator, we're going to set a record in Meadville too. So if the, if the momentum can keep going, things are great, uh, even with all the, the headaches and everything else that there is to deal with. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, I mean, this is different than, you know, we, we talked to people on this show, uh, you know, both, you know, here and in Texas, you know, people that have kind of started from the ground up, you, of course, are, are kind of stepping into something that's a very established, especially in the era, it, you know, it, it has a lot of history behind it. I think, are you the fourth owner? Third or fourth? You're third. the fourth. Third. Third. Mm -hmm. But isn't Bubba the Bubba originally owned it? I, I don't know. Maybe I got my numbers wrong. But still, uh, it, it's been around. Oh, I mean, I, okay, Bubba owned it <laughs> yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but no, third, third. Yeah. It was uh, Norm Chuck me, as far as I know. Okay, that's right. Okay, so so you you're, you're kind of stepping into something with this much history. Do you think you know knowing what you know, going into the business, learning this side as a promoter? Do you think it would have been easier? starting from the ground up or are you glad you have something with this much history that you get to mold and push forward that's such that's like literally a phenomenal question you never have those so that's great um wow that's really thought-provoking <laughs> yes and no <laughs> uh having the fan base and especially in the day and age of social media having the social media foundation that we have which is i think i, I think something that chuck maybe underestimated Mm -hmm. um, being able to just start with the presence that we have, uh, the presence at court time, the presence at Clearfield, the snowball was already rolling. So from that aspect, absolutely, way easier. Uh, you know, you just you pay money, you get assets, it's all there. The branding's done. I mean, everybody knows who IWC is. We're, we're the, probably the biggest in Western PA, maybe even a little bit beyond. And so that, from that standpoint, absolutely, uh, it, it was worth every penny what makes it more difficult is the pressure that you have on you because IWC has been the premier uh, promotion in Western PA for so long and it's had its ups and downs, but through it all, whether it was the norm era, the Chuck era, it's, it's still been viewed by many as the top place. So there's a lot of pressure to continue that tradition. There's a lot of pressure to make sure that you're keeping keeping the fans' expectations, you're meeting the fans' expectations, um, and and that part has been very, very stressful uh, because you have, as a, as a fan and even as an, as an employee, uh, you know, as, as the Aftershock host, the backstage interviewer, the producer, and then the little role in creative that I had, you have all these phenomenal ideas, and you know, you see these fans, which, which is totally cool, and I, I like when people write reviews and stuff, but you see all these people throw their own perspective out there. But it, this isn't a video game, so you know, you can fantasy book anything, but you have to, the things that you never really think of, and that mm -hmm. you, even me saying this can't express until you experience it yourself, is A, obviously the financial thing. I have a family, I have two sons, and every penny that I spend on IWC is a penny that doesn't go to their college or to their food or to their toys or to their clothes. So you're thinking about that. And then these, you're not playing with action figures. You're not playing WWE 2K15. You're dealing with a lot of very diverse personalities. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some are great, some are very far from great. Uh, but you have to work and I'm still in the process of that of adapting to how to uh, 
not please everybody, but work with them. And so uh, that's those challenges uh, can make this a, a little more difficult adjustment, even though the brand is already established. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this kind of goes along with the conversation I was having last night. I started partially on air, but we, we continued off. And I think we had a really good talk about it. Because like people say, you know, watching Raw, watching SmackDown, watching WrestleMania is like, man, I, why didn't they do this? Why didn't they put this at the top of the show? Or put this here? And why did they spread this out? And I got to think about so many people in that position, kind of putting those three hours together. And whereas, you know, this is you, you know, with a handful of people in comparison. Um, I think that really kind of talks to that. Like, no matter where you are as a wrestling fan, it doesn't, I don't think anybody really understands what it's like to actually put this thing together, right? Uh, no, no, it's not as uh, easy. The, the January uh, Reloaded, I know you were there, and I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if any of the seven people in the chat room saw it, but uh, January came off almost exactly how I had it planned. I had to tweak a few things based on uh, personalities and, and politics, but overall, if I could take what's in my brain and throw it out into that ring, mm -hmm. Reloaded was as close as I think I can get. Uh, then we go up to Clearfield, and it's a whole different story because you have it's just it's just so much. Uh, there's so much, so many external factors pulling on you. Mm -hmm. Time constraints, budget constraints. Uh, like I said, these aren't action figures, so you they're not your puppets, and they'll do what you want them to do. You gotta you gotta kind of convince them, and then you know you you can't just throw any two people in the ring together. And these are all things that. I'm I'm still learning, and I'll probably be learning for the next couple of years. Uh, you know, if I'm lucky enough to keep this thing going that long. Um, but yeah, it's 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 fun. It's it's a blast. I'm doing it because I love it. I have an office job. Uh, that's where I make my real life money. Uh, I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this because I love it. Um, and I'll stop the second I stop loving it. But uh, it is not just all fun and games it's probably 25 percent fun so we're getting close to zero but we're still there <laughs> awesome so, okay I, I have to ask because you brought it up you put you, you mentioned your vision for for reloaded and i gotta admit i had my doubts when you when you dropped some of the concepts that you i had to deal with son with the... of a bitch and <laughs> chuck robert can't stop me from swearing now no nope, no he can't no you're the boss you now. That bitch within the first 15 minutes last night and i just said three times right now within the first 10 it's bitch a, that's four <laughs> it's a new it's a new world it's a new era right um yeah, never pretty well. but i got it you know you had these uh, uh these these videos um and, and i don't know if anybody no, nobody probably knows this but like just still doing some of the video work so um from that yeah, I need to, if you're if you're if you're uh one of the seven people in the chat room and you can edit videos please god I, I need somebody. I can't. There's just no time. There's just no time. It's funny because time has all of a sudden become my most valuable asset. Oh, yeah. Uh, well. I, we are looking for video editors. Um, Jesse, the mark, obviously does a great job mm -hmm. with the video packages. But for the day-to-day -day stuff, uh, man, it gets tough. I'm doing it. If I want to do anything simple, even like the reloaded uh, graphics that we did, Sorg, mm -hmm. I got it's between, you know, like, 10 and 1 a.m. and then I get up at 5 and it's um, and then I'm miserable for a day. So yes, if you're watching <laughs> and you love Final Cut Pro, message Sorg. He'll put you in touch with me. I'm not giving out my phone number here, nope. but we will definitely take a look at you. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, hey, and I'm looking for people too. So I mean, it'd be great to kind of get a more of a team behind something like this because I mean, I, don't, I get enough time to get the DVDs together, and that's about it, right? Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, so so I gotta I gotta ask you. Speaking of Reloaded. Um, why Virgil? <laughs> the reset button. The reset button. button. <laughs> and <laughs> let's be honest, he was probably there anyways. Uh, no, I emailed Virgil months mm -hmm. in advance. Okay. Uh, I, I thought, uh, I wanted to set the tone. Okay. What? It, it was twofold. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate to, I'm so against breaking kayfabe, but I, I don't want to be boring, so uh, I. It was twofold. I know uh, most people would see it as a joke, okay. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'll tell you right now. Uh, personally, I've met Virgil five or six times. 
and he's been nothing but pleasant every time. I have nothing bad to say about the guy. And it actually bothers me when people say bad stuff about him because whatever, you know, he, he, whatever your experiences is, this guy was in the WWE and mm -hmm. most of the guys I know weren't. Mm -hmm. So give the guy credit. Um, and he's nothing but pleasant. And you know what? He showed up. He was the first one there before 90% of our workers. Oh, he beat he us. Did, he, he was he he was phenomenal. So whatever, I it mean, was, I could it was it was forever. it was the trainees putting together the ring, us on the video team, and Virgil. It was absolutely crazy. yeah. I I couldn't buy, and I was shocked because I didn't know if he'd show up or not. Because I sent him an email. We just contacted the email. He said, "Don't yeah, call yeah. me, just email me." And uh, I said, "Okay," but uh, I wanted to a uh, I just I knew it would get a big pop because who who in the hell would expect Virgil to be picked by the reset button, and then. Uh, of course, it was kind of my own middle finger to the entire uh, wrestling world, uh, especially the indie world, to be kind of <laughs> like, I'm Justin Plummer, and the first match that I've ever booked, Virgil's going over. So here you go. <laughs> and, uh, and it worked. If you, if you have the DVD, which you need to get, Sorg, where can they get it? They can get that on IWCWrestling.com or DVD and digital downloads over at PittsburghWrestling.com, actually. Two places to get it. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. He probably had, that was probably the second or third biggest pop of the night mm -hmm. when, Virgil, when Virgil came out. And uh, it worked. It, it was exactly what I wanted it to be. He kind of took a little bit longer doing, you know, shaking hands and stuff. I wish it was more boom, boom, boom. But uh, it worked. And uh, and uh, and we'll probably get into the, the rest of the event a little bit, a little bit more. But I always said uh, – <laughs> I've gotten arguments before about when I, you know, when I'm fantasy booking the WWE because, of course, I know better than anybody uh, that actually makes a living doing this um, about how boring it's been for the past however many years and how predictable it's been. And and uh, I get a lot, I got a lot of pushback from workers online saying, just enjoy it, just enjoy it. It doesn't matter about if you know what's gonna. It doesn't matter if you know what's gonna happen. It just matters if if, if the quality is good. Mm -hmm. And my response is that's absolutely wrong. Uh, being unexpected, being unpredictable, surprises, that's all part of it. The Sixth Sense movie would have sucked if that ending didn't throw you off. The Planet of the Apes would have sucked if that ending. Uh, surprise twists are what make good things great. And um, that's what I'm trying to bring to the IWC. Now, I'm not talking let's do a uh, pull of Vince Rousseau hard here but i want to bring unpredictability back to the iwc which is probably the only thing that it's i think it's been a great product chuck mm -hmm. did a phenomenal job but i think the unpredictability is what it's been lacking for at least a year or two now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i can see that i can see that and even uh you know you know and i, I know you know in talking with you um there's been a curious brain trust i've been witnessing happening on Facebook uh, with some ideas floating around. Um, but I know you you really kind of want to shake things up in general, not just that. Um, um, it, it, it's, you know, we got Cage Clearfield, Combat and Clearfield, yeah. not just a Combat and Clearfield 8, whatever it's going to be, right? Uh, which we've sat on that name for a while, I realize. Um, but, uh, you know, it, definitely a lot of concepts I've seen that are going to be interesting. Um, Things perhaps. are changing, uh, yes. Yeah. And some changes are in the works. Yeah. Some changes we just couldn't, we're not going to have ready this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's plenty, plenty of more changes to come. We just, it's, it's time to evolve. It's time to be different, freshen up a little bit. And uh, that's, that's my goal. I mean, we're not going to have a reloaded, you know, reloaded is a, is a unique, was a unique event in that it was very random and unpredictable. Right. And that's not going to be how it is all the time, but, uh, there are going to be a lot of changes, including changes to the roster, enhancements. I don't even want to say changes. I want to say enhancements to the roster mm -hmm. and uh, enhancements to the overall production quality uh, coming throughout the rest of the year and on into 2016. Mm -hmm. and, and this is already, I think, one of the we've talked about this before. Like this, Eamon is, has spoken to this too from what he sees of uh, videos of uh, IWC that you know I, I passed him to check it out. Uh, you know about that that quality. You know, and especially with uh, court time, we have a lot a great advantage there at, at court time. I think we get to do a really cool thing, especially uh, you know Marshall bringing the lights has been tremendous. You know, it mm -hmm. really really adds to that that big feel uh, going on down there. 
Um, I want to touch on real quick uh, some questions I did get. Uh, we got questions. We do have See, questions. You can thank me because I'm the only one that's been promoting this damn thing. Eh, <laughs> put it out there. Put it out there. Um, so we did get a question from Twitter. Um, he, RJ City uh, wants me to ask if uh, your you wife... What, what's that? Are you serious? This is a real question? This is a, this is a question from RJ City. Uh, wants me to ask if your wife got his Snapchats. She did. Oh, yeah? No, he didn't. Let me hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. We're getting some nasty stuff here. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's entertaining. I'm not kidding. Okay. Uh, my wife doesn't have Snapchat. I just got Snapchat two weeks ago because all the cool kids at work were doing it. And I got yelled at, and I had to delete it from my phone. So, no, RJ, my wife has not been getting Wait. your Snapchats. Work yelled at you for having Snapchat? No, 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 no. The kids at work. I'm 30 now. Uh, oh. But the, the young kids, the, the, you know, they're all like, get Snapchat, blah, 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 blah. No one uses Facebook. So I'm like, oh, check it out. You know, whatever. I don't I, I don't know how to work it. I actually, I actually posted something. I don't even know what it was the other day. But uh, when I told my wife, hey, you know, the kids at work said get Snapchat. Check it out. Nope. Get rid of it. Because obviously it's new technology. You must be talking to another girl. Get it out. So I no longer have Snapchat, and she never did. RJ, no. She hasn't gotten anything from you. I hope she – Jen! God. Okay, whatever. He's sleeping. Uh, hopefully she hasn't. Awesome. Excellent. I and mean, there was a little bit of conversation. I'm not going to repeat a few of these that were happening on uh, on, on Facebook here. Uh, but Chris Spiker asks if you can survive the F5. I already have. Already have? I've survived plenty of F5s, absolutely. Well, you got squashed by... Uh, <laughs> Did you at least... Like you're surviving F5. Mm -hmm. Did you at least keep your shoes on after afterwards? <laughs> I don't wear shoes. <laughs> there we go. It's perfect. <laughs> there, we go. <laughs> there they you, are. You always got to be prepared. Actually, that's not true. That was sleight of hand. I have very bright shoes on right now. Very bright shoes. Amazing. Awesome, and anybody, uh, there's a few of you guys in here in the chat room. Please uh, let us know if you have any questions through the night. Uh, you got the promoter, you got the guy, you got the guy that that you know brought Virgil for one thing. <laughs> you know, it's on the resume, right? Um, how was it? Okay, so so you know, right off the bat, um, uh, we got reloaded. We got Tommy Dreamer. Tommy, yes, Tommy Dreamer. You got an ECW legend. Uh, really making a splash here and really kind of uh, bringing a lot of attention to IWC right now. Of course, you know, he's, he's out there doing House of Hardcore up there in, uh, what was it? It's officially like New York area, right? Uh, like, city, Poughkeepsie-ish, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, I mean, what's it like to get uh, somebody like him involved? How's that been? Uh, so far, so good. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to say. You know, we'll see if it keeps... Uh, people's attention we'll see how long he's around i don't you know it's all kind of up in the air he could lose he could lose the title next month to rhino and maybe we'll have rhino in here as our main guy uh going forward and then of course the triple threat match between dalton colin and uh rj city although maybe we'll take him out after that uh snapchat thing but uh uh yeah, I mean, having Tommy, uh, at least for one show, going on two has been great. He is uh, very, very easy to deal with. I mean, obviously, uh, a lot of a lot of guys doing Aftershock. I've dealt with so many different former WWE Hall of Famers and champions and blah, 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 blah. And some are great. Uh, some are absolutely horrible to work with. But, but Tommy is just like a, another guy, you know. He's... Uh, He's a hard worker. He loves wrestling, and that's what it's all about. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, if you want to hear some some stories about those, uh, check out his last appearance here on Indie Mayhem Show. We had some good ones about, uh, especially Night of the Superstars, which is coming up here in Meadville, or as Eamon calls it, Meadville on the show. I, as I called it that one time, and you'll never let me forget we'll it. We'll never forget it. I, I grew up I grew up 10 minutes down the road from Meadville. I, I would never let you forget about that. Um, but anyways, it's my homecoming, man. I get to work like where people from high school that never left town may be able to see me. Um, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> but no, you got the big uh, Night of the Superstars coming. You know, again, a lot of big names. And how does this happen? The main list of names, you know, first of all, some of these guys that are coming in. First of all, recent Hall of Famer Kevin Nash. 
Gangrel, who, by the way, I think also popped up at the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Uh, Rhino. Absolutely. Rhino, who coinc- coincidentally or or intentionally took on the former Logan Shulo in his first appearance back on NXT. That was interesting. Um, I don't believe in coincidences. You don't believe in No. Oh, and, uh, and, of course... Uh, you know, guys like DJ Zima Ion, who's uh, currently doing awesome things in TNA. Matt Seidel, who who just melted my brain with his match with AJ Styles when they were in Wheeling for Ring of Honor uh, a few months ago. Um, it's such a tremendous lineup for this. Did you leave the headliner out of your list? Oh, no, no. I, I'm building. I'm building, man. I mean, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm building. I'm building. How about Ric Flair? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you can buy a ticket to meet him because I he's believe they're all be sold out. Too. But you can't buy a ticket to meet him because he's already sold out. He's sold out. Uh, yeah, they had. Just... Yes, he's sold out, and, and uh, <laughs> that's just the way it is. So uh, unfortunately, we we couldn't. We had to separate him from the rest based on past experiences and mm-hmm. and um, other things and uh he's he is sold out but you can still meet him he'll still be there at the live show it's not like you're not going to see rick flair no no. you didn't if you weren't one of the first 250 or whatever it was for the meet and greet he will still be there uh and he'll be hosting the first ever uh rick flair invitational battle royal uh where he personally invited uh every every iwc superstar that he saw potential in into that battle royal um so, uh, yeah, look for a top star to Man. come out in that one. But you will see Flair, whether you have that beat and greet or not, absolutely, uh, for sure. Awesome. I, 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 really, I, I would have loved to see his reaction when he checked out Dravika, <laughs> for instance. Dravika will be there. Dravika is in there. He's definitely in the, in the Battle Royal. So, <laughs> um, But all kinds of fun stuff going on there. Of course, a uh, friend of the show, Andrew Palace, in, in Super Indie Action, that title being defended there. Tommy Dreamer versus... Rhino for the IWC Heavyweight Championship. I'm uh, really excited. I've done some uh, done some shows with Rhino in the past. I actually got to interview him uh, for the uh, Finding Zach Allen piece. Really cool dude uh, to work with. Really good to see him uh, hanging around with uh, IWC. Um, I'm really looking forward to that and seeing seeing the. I mean, he is. We're talking about like Rhino is the last ECW champion. I'm not counting all that crap in WWE. He's the last ECW champion, if I recall right. He's the last and the last ECW. The last. TV champion. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, he, he held both titles, and uh, of course, he, he targeted one of our former champions in NXT. And now, uh, you, within the next week or so, you'll be seeing uh, he actually has some words as to why he attacked Logan Chulo, why he's here in the IWC. Uh, that we'll be posting on our Twitter account at IWC Wrestling, on our Facebook pages, uh, and on our website IWCWrestling.com. But uh, he was sending a message, apparently to Tommy Dreamer and to the IWC that he's coming for the IWC title. And um, that's all I know now. I haven't seen the video, uh, but I, I heard it's it's on its way. So hopefully we see something here within the next couple of days or week or so. Awesome. Awesome. So what's the biggest thing? What, what do you think is going to be a sleeper hit out of this uh, show coming out? That any other matches on maybe uh, that we haven't talked about might be popping up, you know, from, from uh, some of your regular guys? Uh, in the, for the Meadville show? Yes. It's, it, it's it's really tough to say because you don't know what people are going to do when they get out in front of 1,500 fans. It's mm-hmm. a very different atmosphere than 400 or 300. Um, and so it, it'll be interesting to see how they react. Of course, DJZ, IWC Zone, mm-hmm. and Matt Siddell, uh, I think people are expecting that to be a show stealer. It's not the main event. Uh, but I think it might be one of the ones that people are looking forward to the most. Mm-hmm. Um, one that I'm personally excited for, and that's why it's happening again, Keith Hott and Dylan Bostick. Mm-hmm. I think uh, these guys are great storytellers. I think it reloaded when Dylan Bostick debuted uh, and lost to Keith Hott. I think it was one of the most entertaining matches of the night. We'll see if it happens again. I, I keep my eyes peeled for that. And, of course, Rick Flair, Rick Flair Battle Royal. Uh, I'm, I can tell you, I can guarantee you, keep your eyes on that Battle Royal because the man that wins that is most likely going to be making a very large impact in the IWC going forward. Um, 
So, so that's going to be a really exciting one to watch because the winner of the Rick's Battle Royal, it's going to really open a lot of doors for them um, and give them a jump start above everybody else that's kind of trying to get to get going in the IWC. Awesome, awesome. Also, I, I got to point out, we mentioned RJ City earlier, uh, but he's going to be uh, taking on uh, other friends of the show that have been on this and the Wrestling Mayhem show, uh, respectively. Uh, three-way, uh, RJ City, Colin Delaney, and Don Castle. Don Castle, who's been doing amazing things on Ring of Honor lately as well. Yeah, yeah, Dalton's, Dalton's starting to break out. It was only a matter of time. Uh, oh, yeah. Ever since the pillow fight that we had, I knew he'd be a star. And I'm just wondering is why that, I'm is that in the, my garage. Is that the plumber, the, the plumber bump, perhaps? <laughs> that, I'm taking credit for the initial bump. I don't, I don't give a damn what anybody says because some of those, some of those aftershock segments that we did Tra- it, it, that's back when people actually watched Aftershock, and it translated into the live crowd. It helped put it helped put him on the map. No, I don't know if anyone will ever agree with that, but I honestly believe that. So, so deal with it. Um, <laughs> but it, it's great. It, I mean, it, you knew he was going to be something kind of from the very beginning. Oh yeah, and that's why, as host of Aftershock, um, you know, I really had a lot of creative freedom as to what to do there and that's why i was constantly getting him on because you knew uh let's just get this guy out there uh as much as possible because he's going somewhere and uh yeah yeah he uh, held the iwc championship for a year gonna get a chance to get it back um and so we'll, we'll see where that heads uh he's definitely evolving he's in the He's the he's the one coming out of the cocoon, I think, not me. Uh, coming in, <laughs> developing into a new persona in front of the entire country. So it's exciting. Uh, it'll be exciting to see where that goes for him. I'm really excited, and and uh, he definitely deserves all the success that he's about to get. Tremendous. All right, I want to hit you with some wrap up questions here, real quick. Uh, first of all, what are other than IWC, of course? What are you watching in pro wrestling outside of that? Uh, I try to, you know, I, I keep up with WWE, which, uh, I think everybody does, um, haven't been, like I said, running a company, having a full-time other job, having two kids, being a husband, keeping up the house. Uh, it's hard to, to keep up with anything, but, um, WWE is really the only other, uh, product that I've seen. I see clips of our, when our guys get on NXT uh, I'll see it when our guys pop up in Ring of Honor. I'll make sure I check it out. Mm-hmm. But overall, WWE is the uh, is is the only thing that I consistently stay in touch with. It is pretty cool. I know I I take a lot. I I try to comment every time you know seeing guys like Kalisto, the former Samurai Del Sol, even Sami Zayn, guys that have been there for Super Indies or IWC in the past. You know, Jimmy Jacobs just uh, apparently getting a job up there in creative. He's been around. Uh, a few years probably before your time actually uh you know I, it's really cool to see that legacy leading into that you know yeah well how about that last night on raw the uh the two of the guys that were in my first super indie uh, uh cesaro and samurai del sol both on raw in the same match Just i'm like killing it not- and absolutely killing it uh, oh how did samurai del sol do did he not na- i mean that i was so you know i and i don't know the guy personally i no. I think we went to the bar, but he was so quiet. He didn't say a word, but just kind of knowing where he came from, not knowing him personally, but knowing the ladder he climbed. Mm-hmm. I was so proud uh, to watch that happen, you know, thinking mm-hmm. this is a guy that was in an IWC ring just a few years ago. And now here he is. And he was flawless on Monday night raw. Um, I think he even drew a comment from, from uh, JBL at one point or Booker T, or one of the guys, where they said, this guy's got a future, or this guy's got a career. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it, it's... Because you see so many uh, luchadors or, or guys of that style mm-hmm. that haven't worked out, I guess you could say. And um, it was... I know it was only one match, but but it, it was awesome. It was awesome. And then the team in there against the, my very first backstage interview at court time, was uh, Cesaro and Chris Hero. Wow. So it was cool. It was just kind of a cool uh, moment to watch to watch those guys on the biggest stage out there. Nice, nice. All right, and this is a little different because, I mean, you were on a different uh, uh, kind of vibe when we asked this before, but 
what's the best and worst thing? Maybe you can't even say that part uh, about being a promoter <laughs> up to this point. The best thing is the uh, is, is seeing the fans enjoy your. It, it's not an. It's it's a full month's worth of work, uh, mm -hmm. and and just seeing that you're bringing joy to people and whatever's going on in their life. You know, it's it's all left at the door, uh, and that goes for the workers. That goes for the fans. That goes for me. When we all walk into court time or or the building in Clearfield, or we walk into Meadville or White Oak, wherever it is. You just you forget about whatever's going on for for two to three hours, and and you just have fun, and uh, especially especially uh, kids' reactions. I just love it. Uh, it. It makes it all worth it for that small amount of time. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, um, you know, even it, it. I try to get to the door when the fans are on their way out, and I, I I usually make it about half of them are gone already, but I try to shake everybody's hand, and even the smallest. You know, I had a good time tonight, or my son had a blast. It's just, you know, it, it takes them a second to say it, but it means so much because you work so hard to put it on. So definitely the fans, um, you know, seeing that, that they're enjoying the fruits of your labor uh, is the best. The worst? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's, <laughs> everything else. Everything else. So, uh, it, it, <laughs> It's a challenge dealing with uh, the, the different personalities, mm -hmm. uh, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, well, and it takes all kinds of. And, and I mean, you know, that's not. I don't think it's a slight on anybody. That's it's that's just a. It's a interesting mix of personalities to decide yeah, to do. Yeah, slight on some people. Do, there are some that yeah, are way worse course. than others. But I mean, the, the, <laughs> it takes a certain personality <laughs> to make it in this business, you know. And I think you get really interesting ones all along the spectrum, you know. You do, and there are some really, really good people out there. Super Hentai, who we talked about before we started the show, yeah, is is just phenomenal. Uh, Marshall Gambino, great. John McChesney, mm -hmm. uh, Tommy Dreamer. I uh, hate, you know, I. It's funny because he's the big timer, but he's just what do you need? Um, uh, guys like that, uh, Colin Delaney, uh, another one, just great guys to wear. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to start listing names, so I'll forget people. Um, but it's very stressful, and uh, there's just so much, you know, like I said, running the show is this part of it. The business end, the uh, dealing with the state and the finances and the taxes and the licensing is the majority of it. So this little part of dealing with the talent, um, anyone who can make it easy on you or even help out is, is uh, you know, words can express how, how, how helpful that is. Awesome. Justin, thank you very much. We've spoken uh, very highly on you on this show. I, I love seeing where this is going. And uh, I, lo I, I love when you guys surprise me sitting out there, too. So because, uh, uh, you know, I'm watching through the monitor, but I'm still a fan. Uh, and uh, definitely with IWC, I like seeing where it's going. So uh, so if people want to check out, of course, IWCWrestling.com coming up April, t April 11th. Meadville, PA. You can get tickets over there on IWCWrestling.com. And I believe you can still get tickets for the meet and greet. Where you can meet all those guys we talked about: Tommy Dreener, Rhino, Hall of Famer Kevin Nash, and and Gangrel, Matt Gangrel, DJ Z, and all of your favorite IWC superstars: Dalton Castle, RJ City, mm -hmm. Colin Delaney, Keith Hot, Andrew Palace. All be there. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. And we're trying to crack sixteen hundred this year. We want to set a record. So wow. make sure you're out there in Meadville. Getting those goals. I love it. I love seeing this. It's the right way. And, and as a fan of social media and doing social media, I love to see what, you, what you're pushing out there as well. So go check it out, iwcwrestling.com. At Plumber Loves You on the Twitter if you want to, uh, if, you, if we missed your question. Is there a graphic here? Is there a graphic? for? Yeah, there's a graphic right, right there. It says Plumber Loves You. Look at it. There you go. Um, so go check that out. And uh, thanks. And we'll talk a little bit more indie wrestling with Eamon. And again, thanks a lot, Justin Plummer, for joining us. I thought we had a great, great talk with him there. Um, so now, now, full disclosure, we're recording Restless after the Wrestling Mayhem show now. So we got a weird gap going on here. Through um, the curtain. But I did promise I'll talk about uh, RWA's March to the Victory 2015 was over the past weekend. And, Eamon, I don't know. Have you dealt with a lot of, like, false Count Anywhere kind of matches in, in your profession? 
so far? We've had we've had some street fights. Okay. That, that had broken out. We've had some stuff spilled to the outside before. So we had an intergender hardcore match. Well, it yeah, falls count anywhere technically. Uh, between Nick Espon Taylor is a tremendous talent that's been joining them, part of the um, uh, Bad Boys Club, I think they call themselves there, with uh, Jesse Bell Smothers and um, um, Shane Andrews. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, let's say it was a, it was pretty pretty raucous. And I, I said this to a few people after the show uh, that Bad Boys Club, the stuff between her, them and uh, Mickey Knuckles and Sanjay Dutt over the women's and the cruiserweight titles is the best stuff going in that bed right now. Um, it's been it's been entertaining month to month. The crowd has been hot as hell for it. Um, and it's been tremendous. Earlier in the night, Mickey Knuckles came out with the belt that had been apparently stolen, right? <laughs> what does that sound like, right? Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then effectively took it with her to the bathroom. And that's the last mm-hmm. we saw of it. Um, but no, then she and her match, I'd say all over the place. We actually had Pedro, who has been on our show a couple weeks ago. Uh, surprise was at RWA. Um, and I'm really glad because, you know, IWC is a lot of like, Hey, uh, can I get somebody out there to, you know, help with the, you know, help, with, help with the courts. Cause you know, Chachi's courted to us, uh, with the, with the camera. And, um, and he was out there helping them as, as they're going through the crowd and the crowd gets really kind of in the way cause there's no guardrails and everything. Right. Um, like the crowd gets up on the ring practically in these situations when it gets all over the place. And, uh, and, and, and I look up and Pedro's out there pulling cord for him so he's not getting caught on the ring posts. Mm-hmm. Freaking amazing. And really, really helped him and really kind of saved his ass. Saved, saved uh, at least our end of the show, I thought. Um, so it was really, really cool to hear, hear that or see that happen, you know. Um, so, uh, but uh, and then there was a point where they did come over our way. And I got the <laughs> announcers beside me. And and as it is, I already had like the rest of them that were banned from ringside came over, kicked out the 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 good guy from the uh, commentators booth, uh, which was entertaining. But uh, but then I have to manage new people, right? While I'm trying to switch right. and do an audio, so like I'm very octopusing things, right? Um, and uh, they come over and they slam his head on our commentators table. <laughs> well, she think yeah, she didn't do it hard, you know. She did it protectingly, but didn't know that the table was fairly unstable, um, and knocked over one of my mics that was already having problems through the night. And then poor <laughs> Church had to hold it for the rest of the night. Indie wrestling, guys. This is why I don't indie buy. Wrestling. This is why I don't buy new shit to take it to indie wrestling for these kinds of situations. Mm. Um, you know, because I mean, it's one of those, I have like probably two things there that if they broke, I would probably cry. Um, and thankfully the things on the commentary table are not any of them. Right. Um, one mic I've had for about 10 years. The other one was a hand-me-down, uh, and they have an old monitor on there. So again, I probably didn't pay for, but, uh, you know, that, 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 that kind of goes to that. You know, we, people say, well, we don't have money to do these things. It's like, well, sometimes you don't want to bring certain things with you. You know, there's a reason the camera with the busted screens at ringside um, and more yeah. has been busted because it's gotten more broken. That camera has gotten broken so many times at ringside, that specific camera um, that uh, there's a reason. There's an absolute reason. And I wouldn't upgrade that camera to anything more, you know, HD, et cetera without a freaking rider in my contract <laughs> that it's right. protected. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that's that's an aspect. And, and, and I'm not trying to, you know, kind of bash on RWA or, or the rest was involved or anything. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. But but I, I did determine if anything were to ever happen, that they would do something like that on my table with all the things doing the DVD production, that if something gets knocked loose, you don't have a DVD anymore, I would probably just pack up and leave. Yeah, <laughs> and like we're done. We're done. I'm out of here. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> and so, um, but it got me thinking about that a little bit. So that was my interesting weekend. Um, but no, no, but it was great. I, I thought there was a lot of new faces. Um, this Broderick Shaw guy, who I I need to look this up. I think he was the guy that's teaming with John Demichesney in in uh in uh Erie, perhaps. Mm. Um, big bulky guy. Um, but uh, another guy. Um. Scott Matthews, I think it was. Hold on, I'm going to go the RWA site. I don't know if these guys have been around or anything like this, if they're general newbies. There were a lot of new faces there, uh, which was pretty good to see. 
Um, but uh, but no, it was uh, it was a pretty good show all around. Uh, really kind of well paced. We had the farewell for you know friend of the show Ryan Mitchell. Uh, I believe he rejoined the Navy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, mm-hmm. Cut his hair. The dude cut his hair. He's done. Has to be. You know. Um, yeah. But uh, there was a good half an hour thing. We're gonna actually going to put that entire thing on YouTube. Uh, so you can check that out. Great video. Thank you, Chachi, for doing the, the farewell video and helping out in that aspect there. Um, and then the usual friends of the show that, you know, we, we talk about like Generation Dead were a part of it. Some, some great, great matches. So um, so check that out. That'll be on digital download, uh, PittsburghWrestling.com. I should, that have, I should have that up here Wednesday. It's d- Well, it's done. I have to render a thing and upload a thing. But uh, that should be out soon. So any indies on your radar, Eamon? Uh, you, you know, there's there's any stuff happening all over the place. I may actually be attending a, a pretty big indie show this weekend. Uh, if things turn out well, I will hopefully be at Ring of Honor this weekend in San Antonio uh, uh, this Saturday. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, Alberto Albatron is uh, one of the many names announced. Uh, uh, the lineup's starting to come together. It's looking pretty good. Um, uh, one of the big matches that uh, uh, was announced, I think, yesterday that uh, I'm – going to be very happy to see is uh, uh, two of the newest members of the Ring of Honor roster, uh, Donovan Dijak taking on uh, a certain guy by the name of Dalton Castle. Nice. And yeah, this will be my first time actually getting to see Dalton. So I'm excited about that. I, I mean, I'm, uh, that, that's one of the things where I was like, I kind of want to go to the show now because like, I really want to see that. Um, his stuff in Ring of Honor seemed to be really, really cool. So um, yeah, uh, uh, that's we- this weekend, uh, Saturday at the uh, Shrine Auditorium, by the way. So mm-hmm. Awesome. And in an interest of, you know, I, I like to kind of pick something out of Nate Stein's emails uh, about upcoming uh, professional wrestling. Uh, this one is AIWF, which stands for Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. Wait, that doesn't match up at all. Uh <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, but they got TV over there. They're actually going to have uh, coming up here uh, uh, one one Samoa Joe, it seems. That's not the right computer. Uh, <laughs> that was the Bobby computer before, wasn't it? Uh, but no, they got TV episodes up on YouTube. I don't know if they're TV TV or what. Uh, oh, King's Hot Dogs advertises on it, so good for that, you know. Nice. Uh, but it looks like they got some stuff going on. Uh, something to check out there. But if they got Samoa Joe, you know, it's a good starting point, you know. Uh, you know, that is the philosophy that kind of brought me into watching something like a, a, an IWC was always... Actually, do these guys only have one camera? I think, wait a minute, there might be something over here. Hold on a second. No, no, apparently it's just one camera. All right, mm. uh, but I mean, but no, some wrestling to check out. It's got some mojo, and you know, as I said, with you know, get into IWC, and we talked about all the guys with Justin Plummer, but like a lot of thing that really got me into it was okay. I came for the guys I've heard of, Samojo, maybe in this case, but I stuck yeah. around if the rest of the wrestlers really kind of you know proved that they're worth coming back for, you know. And Definitely. I think I think that's how you gain fans. That's how you make new fans is something like that. You need Tommy Dreamer to come in once in a while to be like, ooh, fuck Tommy Dreamer, sure. Uh, and, uh, and and roll around to that. They got a show Saturday, April 11th. I, I looked at the wrong week on this uh, email, apparently. Uh, AIWF Mid-Atlantic uh, down in uh, Rocky Gap, Virginia. You can find out more at AIWFMidAtlantic.com. So. All right, Eamon. Is that it? Awesome. Is that that, all that's got? all I got. I got but, uh, but as we say always, you know, there's any wrestling everywhere, so, so uh, everywhere. be sure to... Uh, find it wherever it may be and, and go support it. I'd love to see a map. I'd love to see Nate Stein's email turn into a map of these are all the places that are indie wrestling <laughs> this weekend, you know? And, yeah, definitely. And it was just like a, you know, thing. And it's like, I am X miles away from indie wrestling on this date. I yeah, definitely. Could be interesting. Could be really interesting. Somebody out there that's a coder, please, you know, <laughs> translate that thing. I mean, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a Google Maps thing you can do. We, oh yeah, definitely. Because uh, we've done that um, with um, uh, with the with the magazine that we distribute it locally here in Pittsburgh, and it's like these are all the places where you can pick up this magazine, right? So mm-hmm. it's just that data entry that's a problem. This is not what this show is about, though. This is about indie <laughs> wrestling. It's the Indie Mayhem Show. Find out more at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to this and other shows. Follow Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Twitters, uh, at Mayhem Show there, uh, and Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, Facebook group, uh, Google+. And uh, please let us know what you think. If there's any indie wrestling you think we're missing, we should be talking about. Let us know. We'd love to yeah, hear send, about send it. Send us emails please. of... Uh, 
uh, shows that you think we should be talking about? Um, mm -hmm. You know, if there's a show that you went to and, and want us to, to tell us about your experience, send that. You know, any questions why, you want us to discuss? Why do you love indie wrestling? Yeah. Or why are you curious about indie wrestling? Or why have you not dived into indie wrestling? Or why do you think indie wrestling sucks? I mean, it, it, it's, it's a, you know, any kind of discussion is... Because we've talked about indie wrestling that sucks on this show. Yes. <laughs> it is out there. We, we have, have seen it. We are not I afraid. have been to the top of the mountain. I've been to the bowels of the mountain. The bowels of the... I don't exactly. think that's how mountains work. But that's okay. Um, but listen, no, listen. Like, I'm uh, no mountainologist. <laughs> Oh man, it is late <laughs> because we're, now we're making up words. Um, but no, yeah, just send us a uh, send us uh, messages. Tell us what you think of the show. Yes. Tell us who's your favorite. That's a joke from not the Mayhem show uh, for this week. What? Um, but uh, yeah. All right, thank you, Eamon at Eamon Two, please, and check out InspireProWrestling.com. Is yes, it, is May thirty first is our next event. May thirty first, so. IWC Wrestling. And, and, we, and we so, uh, you can't get front row to that event because we sold out of it in like ten hours of tickets going on sale. Oh wow, which is kind of crazy. So uh, you'll have to get general admission, but I guess that's okay. <laughs> awesome, and of course I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter to find all the fun stuff I'm working on. And please support the indie ones. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. For the taste of the poor oh, Sing, sing, sing You know how I act now If you got a problem Come and see if I'm a back down Act wild Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com For all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle <laughs>